Hi there. How you doing today? Um, I'm finally back with a video. I've been working like a crazy woman this last week and the week before that we had relatives over and uh, you can't just say to them, hey, could you leave for an hour or two? <laughs> you know, or uh, would you mind shutting up for an hour? Yeah, that don't work. So I didn't get a lot done in that week. I did have a great time. My husband was running around with a plastic bag over his head for the grandkids, and I thought, hmm. So I went over there and tried to tie a rope around him, but he, he got away. Uh, <laughs> it was fun. It was fun. Um, not for him, but for me. <laughs> Anyways, we had a good time with our relatives and our grandkids and all of that jazz. So now my husband is back to work full time which is astonishing to me because he went part-time a couple years ago after COVID and uh, we're old so we can do that. Um, we're in our 60s and so anyways he decided to go back to work full-time nights so you're probably going to see a little bit more of me more videos because I don't have to send him to his room and uh, you know all that good stuff. Well what I have here are some uh, dolls. I call them pillow dolls. I saw somebody make these, sure, I'll show you one with a string hanging out, um, on Pinterest. And they weren't exactly like this, but close, you know, kind of. I, I mean, I did my own thing. So here's a cutie. And they're printed on fabric, like this, which I have printed on fabric, and I will have these available for sale in my shop. You'll get two uh, sheets. You'll get eight images for one price. And I always try to be fair with my prices. So I'm going to show you what you can do with them. Um, this one, this was the first one I made and I'm not, I'm not going to sell it. These will be available in my shop for sale, by the way, because I didn't measure and so it's not perfectly round. This is there's a little more fabric over here than over here, and so I thought, well, I'll put it on my my tree, and it'll remind me how to do it. And in the back, I put some pretty. I love this material, and I made a little uh, gathered, uh, whatever you call it, want to call it. It's supposed to be a flower. I don't know if it looks like a flower or not, but I put um, some more of the beading. I love the beading. And roses, and I, I covered it, covered it with um, this trim and that trim, and so on. What I wanted to tell you and show you how, see where did it go? Yeah, how I made these, so you'll know. This girl here, I'm going to show you. I'm not going to do a tutorial because it's so easy. You don't really need one. I'll just tell you. Okay, so you'll get this a uh, sheet with the fabric, uh, the pictures, the girls printed on it, and you just cut them out and cut out the square. You don't need a lot of seam allowance at all. And then you do it, this has a bow here. I don't know if you can see that, it's so light. But you do a zigzag stitch on the outside. <clears throat> well, you have to add fabric to the back, okay? So in order for it to be a pillow, it has to have fabric. <clears throat> Excuse me. So then you just go around with your zigzag stitch, or if you have a serger, you could use a serger, all the way around her. You don't go on her, okay? You go next to her. You don't want to go on the girl because it'll turn, it'll, it'll be weird. So you don't do that. And then you take your scissors and just cut close to the stitching. Don't cut into the stitching. Okay, you just cut close all the way around. And what I do when I'm done is I take some uh, Aline's Tacky Glue or any white glue, really, and I put it with a, a toothpick around, all around the edges, front and back, so that it won't ravel. Some people, I think, would probably like the ravel look. I'm not one of those people. When I work on something, I like a finished look. So, um... That's how you do it. Just put two pieces of material together. You don't have to turn it inside out and leave the bottom open so that you can stuff it. And when you're done stuffing it, and you don't want to stuff it real um, full, 
okay? Like this one I did as a pillow. You can do them different ways. This is that exact same girl. And I did leave me like a quarter of an inch seam allowance. And I did, I did um, stitch with a straight stitch right on the, uh, the black square, the black background. Then I turned it inside out and I did a uh, blanket stitch is what I call it. And uh, running, it, it's not a running stitch, really. It's it's better than that. It's a blanket stitch, and you can look those up. They're real easy. And then I decorated it. Now with her, um, this is kind of funny because uh, she had when I got done stuffing it, it looked like she had two horns, one on each side, because of these points. I didn't like the points, so I glued them at first, and I didn't like that. So then I thought, well, I'll just sew them down and then I gathered the top a little bit you can see the black stitches to give it like a ruffled look now on her I use some uh, of this I got it uh, Hobby Lobby it's beads on a roll in all different colors I don't know where I've got the uh, cameo I've had it for years and then I have some rhinestones here then I just added a little lace and a flower and this says, with fond love, but you can't see the love. Um, and the other one, she, this is her as well. Look how different you can make them. Her, I did the stitch like this, but I did it all in black because I knew, see, going around there is black. Going around, I didn't go on her face. I went around her hair, around her hat, all the way, and I left the bottom open. Then I stuffed it, and so this uh, is an applique, or a, it's a beaded applique. I guess that's what you would call it. I've had it in my stash for I don't know how many years, but I, it was uh, self-adhesive, and it's all beaded. So I just put it on her head to see how it would look, and I liked it very much, so I glued it on her head. I also took Magic Marker, a very fine Magic Marker, a black one, and I outlined her, I did her eyebrows a little bit on her eyes, some on her hair, just because I wanted it to show up more, you know. Um, but what I was saying about stuffing, when they have a narrow, uh, narrower neck, you can see my stitching here, you don't want to stuff them real um, hard because if you do, you're going to get wrinkles. Now in the back, it's like that, but in the front, it's not. So just so you know, um, they don't have to be oh, stuffed to the max. You know what I'm saying? But anyways, I put some beads hanging down from her. I don't know if you can see them or not. Two different kinds. And then I put an Eiffel Tower on her and a little bit of uh, beading and a um, faux rhinestone. That's really all I did. And, the, you know, the, the um, black uh, lace that I gathered. And I put black lace down here, too, because her, her uh, flesh was showing through the uh, black lace. And it looked kind of funny. Like she didn't have a bra on or something. <laughs> I don't know. So I covered her up. And now she looks good. And I used that fabric as well on the back. And I had to um, slit the back of it because I didn't like the way it was stuffed. And I restuffed it because I'd already sewn it up. And then I just covered it with this uh, velvet ribbon that I love. And this is where I glued on the beads, two different kinds. And then on the edges, I found some trim that I had for a long time and I glued that on. So there you go with that. Now this one, I think she's my favorite one. And this is, this is her right there. And this is her. And, and what I used on her hair, which I thought was kind of cool because I've had this for years. Do you remember, they, they probably still sell them, but scrapbooking, they had all these flourishes and beads, they're adhesive. Well, I have a lot of them left over from my scrapbooking days. So this is what I used on her hair. 
and I did use hot glue on them because I didn't want them falling off. Let me see. And this girl, I did the same thing because I don't know. I just thought it looked pretty. I had this color, and I thought it matched her hair, so I put it on there. And I had this bow. I don't know from where. It was on a piece of something. And I ripped it off, and I put it on her a little black thing, and I gave her some... These are pink and gray hearts, which pink and silver, I should say. They've got like little faux rhinestones in there, pink and, and clear, but they look gray to me. And that's the back of her. Now, I could have used black material. You can use any material you want. I could have used gray material. I could have used anything. And here you can see I've done all of the edges with the, you can't see, with the glue, but they look good. And... Um, over here you can see I could even take a magic marker and darken these edges if I wanted to. I didn't know at the time if I should sew it up in black. I didn't like the way the black looked when you got down here. So I did it in the off-white and then it looks okay to me that way. So I don't have any problem with it. Okay, so that's her. Oh, and then this lady, which you will also get. She's right here. Now, she looks like a businesswoman to me. And so I gave her some blue and silver clear hanging bead hearts. And they're the same as the uh, other ladies, but these are blue. And I have had this call me. Um, it's a pin you would, you, you know, like um, it, it had a, a backing to it. And you would put it on your blouse and put the backing on to hold it, but I never want anybody to call me. <laughs> no, not really. Not if I don't know you, right? So I just never used it. I didn't use it in my scrapbooking because I don't know, it just never fit. But anyways, it fit with her. Her, um, She looks like a business lady to me. And so I put it on her and I think that's perfect. <laughs> and here I outlined it with um, beading that I got from Hobby Lobby. They sell it on a roll. Um, I have little flecks of thread and stuff because I made them all at the same time. And so my desk is full of thread and glue and everything else. These are um, bridal flowers. And she had a yellow rose, as you can see. This is the yellow rose. And I thought she looked better with the black. I was even going to, and I forgot, I was thinking about putting a little feather here and maybe another black rose. So, um, uh, what was it going to, oh, I wanted to tell you, I was thinking about it while I was making it. These kind, This is a resin piece that I made. It's the Eiffel Tower, so it's resin. You can't just glue them on with regular tacky glue or hot glue. They'll fall off. And same with this. This is real metal. What I do is I take um, glossy accents. I cut a little piece of paper. Uh, actually, I take an eighth of an inch punch, and I punch out four or five round circles, um, quarter of an inch, I mean. And I glue them on the back of the metal piece or the resin piece with glossy accents. And I let it dry, and it dries real quickly. Then I glue it on with Aline's Tacky Glue. I use, I glue the paper onto the item. And I'm telling you, this will never come off. Because between Aline's Tacky Glue and the Glossy Accents, they are on for, for good. So, say I did the same thing with her for this little uh, rhinestone pin. I put a quarter of an inch round piece of paper with glass glossy accents on it, let it dry, and then I glued the paper with the pin uh, on with uh, Aline's uh, fabric glue, and it worked. Aline's, I don't know if it's fabric glue. No, regular, regular glue. So anyways, so this one is a shabby chic, and she is my favorite one. This is her here, the exact same one. Um, when you stuff them, they'll look a little different, you know, because the white stuffing changes the color of their face a little bit. And for her, I just gave her a fancy hat with um, some lace trim and some pretty beaded hearts that I had. And I put two layers, same layers that were up here, I put down here, but 
the other way around. And she has, you know, a pillow back. Now, I think these, uh, I was going to make them for Christmas, but I, what I saw were these kind. And I said, no, nah, I don't think Christmas, I couldn't come up with anything for it. So I thought, well, these would look great in a Victorian bedroom or bathroom. You could actually make these into sachet pillows and set them somewhere in your bathroom, in your bedroom, if you're having company and you have a guest room. I mean, wouldn't they just look so pretty sitting uh, there and smelling nice? Somebody will pick them up and go, oh my gosh, where'd you get these? You say, well, they're only... You know, 20 bucks a piece, you can have one if you'd like, <laughs> right? Sell to your relatives, let me tell you. They probably got more money than you do, so <laughs> if you like my relatives. But anyways, this one is also my favorite. I shouldn't quit. They're all my favorite. And that's her right there. It seems to me the ones with a bigger uh, neck, she doesn't have a bigger neck in um, print-wise, but the, of sewing, you have a bigger opening here. They, You can stuff them better. Now, she does have a hand under there, but I, I covered it, you know. And I put um, a little dangle here. And I really didn't want to fill out the whole hat, although I could have, with more roses. But it looked a little, you know, heavy. I didn't want to do that. So I added some glitter. And down here, I, this is part of a table, no, tablecloth, <laughs> yeah, right, part of a doily. And then I added some trim that I had off of a wedding gown. And this is off of some little girl's dress. And then I had these beautiful velvet leaves that I got on Etsy last week uh, from Japan, but they were an American seller, but they got them, they were made in Japan. I bought them, didn't know why I was buying them, but I do love leaves. I don't know, something's wrong with me. I like roses and leaves and all that, and I love dolls. That's why I'm doing this. So this is part of a doily. And I just cut it up and glued it on, and then I did the blanket stitch here to cover her. Okay, and I showed you her. And then this little girl. Now these things here on the dangles... I believe I got them at the Dollar Store or Dollar General, and I just clipped them apart and glued them separately because I didn't want the whole thing to be these, and they weren't hanging anyways. They're on a on a roll. So these are the dangles that, you know, you can... Well, I, I get them from different pieces of clothing. I don't know if you can buy them by the yard. I've, I've never done it. And this is more wedding gown applique, which I have tons of now. <laughs> and some um, roses, paper roses, and more velvet leaves. Oh, yes, yes. And more of of these things, but in, in brown. So I did her whole hair like that. And I did hot glue them. Uh, you have to have the uh, glue gun with a narrow nozzle. And I th I'm pretty sure Walmart sells them. I think they're like seven bucks. They're probably ten now, but they were seven a couple of years ago when I got mine. So there she is. She has this on the back, but that's okay. You can ha you could put a hanger on her, you know, thread and hanger. You could do a lot of things. Now this one I didn't include because she was really tricky. I had her first included on the sheets, but she's all kind of like yellow, and I am not a yellow person. If you are a yellow person, this would have been good for you, but I, I'm not, so I didn't want to do another one. And she's not stuffed full, but I used black thread on her because the um, she was dark background, you know, her hair and everything. And I found these crazy looking things. I don't, I don't know where I got this from. They were on like a necklace, and that's um, black foam under there. And so I thought the gold looked good, and I had some gold leaves, and this is a pin, part of a pin and part of a necklace. I mean, the thing that I loved about these was that I could dig out all my jewelry and my beads and uh, flowers, and I could play around, and believe me, I played for hours with these. I had so much fun. They were so addicting because they're not hard to sew up, number one. Then you stuff them and do a little rind stitch. Then you have them. They're all there and you just play and decorate. So, and then this one 
will be here, is here. And now this one I made bigger because she seemed awful small to me. Um, but all I did for her was put a little netting and a veil and a uh, bridal applique. I made her into a pillow because I felt like her her features were too delicate to go around. But you could try it, you know, but I did not want to. So let me see. Is there another, any others? This one here. Okay. I already showed you this one. Yes, I did. Okay. And what I wanted to show you, what else you can do with them. I started doing this and then I put them up because I said, you know what? I'm going to end up making 20 more of those and not get a video done. So I'll show you what I did here. I started making these. These are the same. This is her right there. Okay. And I thought, well, this would be a nice Christmas ornament or it would be a real pretty um, cover for a, a, envelope, a journal and I might use it for that and, and I don't know I might sell it or I, I might keep it. I don't know what I'm going to do. I have a craft show coming in November which I never do craft shows but I'm doing it as a favor and um, I can't stop thinking about it. Everything I do I'm like well Maybe I could make this for the craft show. So I make them, you know, it could hang something and it's just, <laughs> it needs a backing. It's just paper on the back, but this is fabric. I don't know if I do fabric on that all the time, but anyways, okay. Then I have these little girls. These are in my shop and available and you've seen them before, but what they are, what I did was I put, material on them that you can take off and underneath here is some lace there's not a lot on here but this is folded in half so you get it's probably like like that you know that big of a piece of this embroidered thing and you also get the beading um, that I just put foam tape on the back you get the blue lace which I bought I did not have to dye it it was like that and this comes off. This is a flower. And you also get the doll. And you can wrap your uh, trims around her. And I stamped. These will come off. And I, I did a stamp on here. Which makes them kind of look vintage when you stand them up. And I, I think they're so cute. So this one has an applique on the front and on the back. And has a yard of this pink ruffled uh, organza and a yard of this ruffle as well. Um, this one is not stamped because I thought about the stamp after I put the fabric on her. I believe this one is stamped. Let me see. No, <laughs> okay. Only the blue one is stamped. I think I might have one missing. If I do, it'll be in my store if I find it. Um, okay. So this here is a, just a piece. It's not a yard, but you, you get uh, all this beading here and trim. Uh, what did I do here? I'm just wondering now. Okay. I think this will be the only thing that comes off. I can't remember. Oh no, it's on there with foam. Okay. This all comes off and you can use it on any of your creations. And this is not a yard either. It's just wrapped around and gathered. But this is a yard. And that might even be two yards <laughs> from what I know. But aren't they cute? Aren't they pretty? So anyways, those are what I want to show you. And thank you for stopping by. And if you like my video, please give me a like and leave me a comment. And um, I'll probably be seeing you sooner than you think if I can get uh, some more stuff done and I don't get in my little cocoon and don't come out. Okay, so have a good week. We'll talk to you later.